How far would you go to survive? Would you give cooking lessons on stream to a few people? Probably. But what about eating dog food, giving yoga lessons, or even getting intimate in front of thousands? A man awakes in a small, windowless room, confused and disoriented. He frantically searches the room for a way out, scouring the walls with increasing panic to find only a shower and a toilet, nothing more. He begins to hit the walls, but nothing happens. When he's just about to give up, a black screen lights up with luminescent green Firacode font with the words, Share? He approaches the screen and sees a keyboard. With no understanding of code except the vague notion that code is what the screen desires, he begins to type in commands that might open the door, but the computer returns an invalid command, rejecting him. It asks him again, share? And he presses yes. The computer begins to share, and it takes a moment for the man to realize that he is now being broadcast live to an unknown audience that can watch his every move. The desperate man begins to ask questions, trying to understand what's happening to no avail. Knowing nothing about who may be watching, he appeals to his audience's humanity, explaining that he has a dog at home and it needs to be fed. Again, nobody responds. After giving up, he attempts to use the toilet and is exasperated when he discovers that it doesn't have water. Then he tries to use the sink for drinking water and becomes more exasperated when that too has no water. He types the word water and the computer returns the number. Five. Not knowing what this means, he lies on the floor, feeling hopeless and confused. His hopelessness is cut short when he releases a fart and the computer alerts him. He's been given points. He realizes these points can be used to buy things, understanding the system more, and he can play up to this. The more invigorated man buys himself water, finally able to quench his thirst. Real people are watching him, and these people want to be amused. They will reward him for it. He wants to please his audience and begins to perform funny little tricks in the hopes that he can earn enough points for some food. When he fails to earn enough, he starts inputting commands and accidentally turns off the lights. He gives up for the night and curls up on the cold, hard floor with only his body warmth to fend off his shivers. The next day, the computer asks him again to share, and he accepts. In his frustration, he rants about the situation to his viewers, throws himself embarrassingly across the room, falling over, and finishes it off with a shower. He expects nothing but comes back to find he's been awarded more points. Elated, he spends his points on food, but this excitement wears off when it's delivered, and his dreams of a sustainable meal are crushed by the bowl of dog food in front of him. He's used up his points on dog food. He begins complaining, wanting to send it back, but soon accepts his situation and hesitantly tries the dog food. He realizes this is getting him more points, so he begins to eat more ridiculously, more ravenously, and balances on all floors to mimic a dog. The viewers love this and send him more points. With these new points, he buys himself clothes, but another twist is delivered, because he cannot have anything with dignity. He is given women's underwear, but this man has caught up quickly, and he wants more points, so he knows what he must do. He begins to model the underwear and plays up to his audience. The embarrassment is still new and raw, and that night, when the lights dim and the screen turns black, he sits on the floor in his undergarments and cries himself to sleep on the cold floor once again. In the morning, he braves the situation and immediately starts the broadcast again to earn more points. He throws himself around like a rag doll, verbalizes all of his thoughts, and turns all of his daily movements into some form of entertainment for his audience's consumption. Eventually, he earns enough points to buy more stuff. Despite how humiliated he feels, it washes away when he finally receives his packages, a t-shirt and an inflatable mattress. In exchange for such luxury, he would do it again. As the days go by, he continues his journey to becoming a living being of entertainment, and he gains more points, allowing himself to buy more things. Eventually, he purchases more clothes, hygiene tools to freshen up, more luxurious food. Even this is entertainment because he is vegetarian and the audience finds amusement in seeing him eat meat. He also buys some alcohol for special occasions. He feels more himself again, especially as tonight is a special occasion and he deserves a drink. But this feeling brings the sense of injustice back to him, and he becomes enraged in his drunken state, using the bottles to smack the computer. 
However, this computer is made of unbreakable materials, and the broadcast immediately ends, shutting down his room. Through the next couple of days, the man speedruns all the stages of grief, becoming angry and trying to remove the monitor, punching it with his bare fists in his rage. He then bargains with the computer, begging it for forgiveness before coming to terms with his fate and falling into a state of depression. As he lays down to die, the computer suddenly activates, bringing back power to his room. At the same time, an old man appears in the bottom right corner of the screen saying hello. He introduces himself as another prisoner, and he has the same room as the man who just now thought he was going to die. But the old man's room is filled with lots and lots of items, and he even has a luxury bed. He explains that there are glitches in the system that don't quite function correctly, and once you hit a certain unspecified level, you can gain access to the common network. This network allows him to connect with other prisoners and talk with them. At first, the traumatized man believes that the old man is one of the kidnappers, but he is full of reassurance that they're all in the same boat, and soon enough they take solace in having a companion. Too much of a good thing can be bad, though, because this solace turns into annoyance when he notices that the old man cannot stop talking. Whenever one topic closes, he has another one to turn to. The exasperated man realizes why the old man has so many points, and it's because the viewers are never bored. But unlike him, they don't have to be around it all day. But at night, he wakes up to the sound of intense coughing, and tries to contact the man to make sure he's okay. He inputs many commands, trying to get the right one, and accidentally strikes luck, unlocking more of the common network as his screen lights up with other prisoners. The lucky man finds out they all have assigned channel numbers. His is 14. The old man's is 73. The other prisoners have been there longer and have all fallen into creative niches, showing off their cooking, makeup tutorials, and even yoga. The woman doing yoga holds the captivated man's attention for a while before he continues on his search for 73. When he finally connects with the old man, he's relieved. Over the next few days, they spend all of their time together, from chatting to sharing meals and party tricks between the acrobatic intervals 14 does to earn points. They become close friends. Sometimes at night, the old man goes to sleep, and the night owl watches the yoga woman teach her skill. He sends her a donation, too. The enthralled man buys more items for his room the next day, putting together a table. While he builds it, the old man begins to monologue about levels, and how prisoners need to keep improving their level so that the audience continues to enjoy their content and send points. Otherwise, they get bored and move on. That's not how the furniture man sees it, though. But he respects the old man, so he wants to try out his advice. He tries all the niches he's seen other prisoners using, like cooking and singing. With his varying content, he brings in a variety of new audiences that love to see what he does, earning more points than ever before. The generous man uses this new wealth to gift his friend some cough medicine, because he can't stop coughing at night and he's concerned. At night, he follows the yoga woman's tutorials, his respect for her growing. After this, he attempts to make another purchase and his command goes wrong, somewhere. And instead of making his purchase, he ends up in the room of number 11, a random woman in the shower. She's indignant about his depraved actions and accuses him of being the one who put her in that boxed room. The disgraced man interrupts her yelling to explain that he didn't mean to intrude and that he's a prisoner just like her. She accepts this, but immediately asserts that they need to set up some boundaries so that things like this don't happen again. In unfortunate timing, the old man pops in, but she overlooks this with understanding. As a newbie to the prison, she asks them both if anyone has ever tried to escape, and the now experienced man informs her of what happened when he tried to destroy the monitor, reliving the traumatic memory. The determined woman is adamant that they can find a weakness in the system if they analyze it. But the old man doesn't take this well, comfortable with his situation, and leaves the conversation. The woman curiously wonders about their situation. Why them? Why are they here? What do the kidnappers want from them? The sentimental man begins to explain that before he came here, he was a nobody. But now he feels like he's someone, a person who actually matters to people. He cares about his audience and appreciates what he feels he's doing for them. It seems that he's more content being here than he ever was in the outside world. Now, 
his every action means something to someone. The next day, he decides to find his own unique niche and make sock puppets, surprising his audience with a puppet show that amuses not only the old man, but also his viewers who send him more points. With this currency, he gifts the woman a shower curtain for privacy in this exposing online world. But she doesn't feel good about this. She wants to be able to sustain herself, but she also doesn't want to perform tricks for an audience. This world isn't well suited to her. In the meantime, the creative man has come up with yet another idea, and this time it's to give a drawing tutorial for his audience. But this ends up being more amusing than educational because it seems he needs the lessons more than anyone watching could. His fellow prisoners are all amused, though, and he enjoys bringing them laughter. With all his new points, he's able to buy more furniture and items he could never have afforded before. At this rate, he'll catch up with the old man in no time. But this infuriates the new woman because she hates this world, and she suggests a revolution. Both of the men disagree with her because they view this life as more of an opportunity than a prison sentence, their views are simply incompatible, and they start intensely arguing until the old man has to stop coughing. That night, the pair are alerted to coughing, more brutal than usual, and find the old man collapsed on the ground trying to catch his breath. His fit is so extreme that he has a seizure, falling against the screen and unable to move. The pair are greatly panicked by this, working together to get their friend help. The creative man pleads to his audience for their help, whilst the reclusive woman attempts to insert any command on the monitor that she can think of in the hopes it will help him. But this backfires, and a wrong entry makes the situation worse, flames erupting from the walls of his room. All they can do over the next few minutes is watch, helpless, and the flames grow and reach their friend, engulfing him in furious flames. The screen turns black, and they realize he's gone. The next few days, they are silent. After those days, the kind man breaks the quietude to tell his companion that it's not her fault, that she was only trying to help. She remains silent, using the puppets that brought her so much joy before. He performs a show that encourages her to speak to him again. But all she says is that she wants to get drunk. They both order alcohol, and in their tipsiness, they open up to one another sharing those precious last memories they had before finding themselves in this box. They dance, pretending that they're touching, but in their drunken stupor they turn their dances more sensual, beginning to remove clothing. They then have more romantic fun, staring intensely at one another. This intimate moment has wealth flooding their pockets as they remain ignorant to their onlookers. The next day, the previously content man has decided that the woman is right. They need a revolution. There have to be glitches somewhere in the system, and the old man's death proves it. The righteous man begins to share his feed, explaining the old man's death and what it could mean to the other prisoners. That there are strange functions that each prisoner comes across at some point, and perhaps one of these may open the boxes. But the feed is disturbed by the yoga woman, who tells him that she liked what he said, though talks about it metaphorically. There is already tension, because the other woman calls her out, stating that they're talking about real life, the yoga woman represents life inside the box, and the indignant woman represents life outside. The yoga woman ignores her and says goodbye to go to sleep. After this, the remaining pair contact the other bloggers who are emboldened by the broadcast, each sharing their weird experiences and the capabilities of their monitors. That night, the captivated man decides to talk to the yoga woman before her broadcast begins, and she shares that she finds the other woman negative, sowing seeds of distaste. But she also shares that she loves the way he makes people smile, which he likes because nobody has put into words what he feels before. They're about to begin a private yoga session when the indignant woman joins, disrupting their bonding. For a few days, the indignant woman is obsessed with studying other channels, and those prisoners begin to really let her in. Those people have discovered curious functions, like control over the ventilation or the movement of the walls, showing that this place is extremely sophisticated. She shares that she wants to design a map of the rooms, but the righteousness that spurred the content man has now faded, replaced with the warmth of the yoga woman's compliments and the feeling of meaning something. 
which he never experienced in the outside world. He disagrees with her idea, not wanting her to disrupt the happiness some people have discovered within these small walls. The woman responds to him by cutting her hair, showing off her seriousness. That night, the yoga woman broadcasts again, but uses her yoga to discourage fellow prisoners from engaging in escape, willing them to find happiness in where they are now. They begin to argue, resorting to pettiness like suggesting to the yoga instructor that late night streams are actually rude. The torn man interrupts, but they begin talking to him, attempting to turn him towards their side and away from the other, reaching a peak in their competitive tension. But today, he saw a broadcast by someone who was just like him in his first few days in this box. Cold, hungry, humiliated. He has pity and realizes that perhaps they can do something. And so he stops the pair from arguing and begins his own broadcast. In this live show, he requests that every viewer send him one point. And suddenly, his points begin to skyrocket, causing a glitch in the system. The yoga woman becomes indignant, infuriated that he's now more successful than she is, despite the work she puts in. Feeling petty, the analytic woman uses her newfound information about how the rooms work to make it rain in the yoga woman's room. But with the glitch that the newly famous man has triggered, the system becomes highly sensitive to verbal commands. And with an unfortunately worded insult, the yoga woman's room then completely flips on its head, and the rain stops, only to be replaced by burning fire bursting through the walls. And even more unfortunately, the indignant woman's room also sets on fire. The newly famous man can do nothing, and simply watches his only two remaining friends burn to death reliving the trauma of the old man's perishing by a tenfold. Everything shuts down, and he's left to stare at a blank screen, his own reflection staring back at him. He doesn't know how to react. All he feels is the shock as he begins to process what just happened. But he hears a noise behind him and sees the wall beside him light up with a light he hasn't seen in so long. The sun. The door has opened. He's free. He staggers to his feet, ready to leave, but there's another sound. The monitor has just turned back on. In that moment, he turns away from the open door, returning to his audience to tell them what just happened, and before he knows it, the door slams shut again. He begins to dance.